welcome to Power to the Flower. Thanks so much for joining me today on my gardening channel where we're gonna be talking about resurrection gardens. These little gardens turned out so cute and I'm really excited to share them with you because especially my children loved making them. And today we're actually going to make uh, four more. So the story goes that the pastor at our church, the children's pastor, saw this on Pinterest, thought it would be a fun idea, asked if maybe I could facilitate it at our church in like a socially distanced way. It worked amazing. We were able to make 25 of these yesterday. And so now I think we have it down, like really down pat. So this will be a great time to film because we we know what to do and what not to do. Number one, the items that you need. You're going to need some sort of tray. I We, we landed on this. We started with um, like a tin foil tray, a Tupperware tray, a box. But then in the end, we just got a pot tray, like a plastic one. This is a 13 inch. This one is a 12 inch. And then I have this little plastic one. This is a new idea. Uh, that's probably more like even an eight or a 10 inch. So it really just depends what you, how big you wanna make your garden. Then you need one small terracotta pot. I bought these at uh, the dollar store, um, or you can also find them at your local nursery. You just want something small. This is gonna be the tomb. You need some sort of tombstone. So kind of a larger size rock. We found some at Lowe's in bags. And then you need just like a cluster of different types of sand and stones. So we have sand here. These are rainbow pebbles. This is white lava rock. This is um, more small rainbow pebbles. Uh, what else do we have? We here we have some small white rock. So you're going to need that. You're also going to need some soil. And then you're also going to require some sort of moss. I used preserved sheet moss. I'm gonna soak this in water and then we're going to use that over the top of our tomb. Another idea is to use kind of a mossy ground cover that's actually living. I also tried using grass seeds. That did not work at all, so I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, it could work, but it takes a lot of care and <laughs> that wasn't really our style. You're also gonna need sticks to make the crosses and jute string. Then you're gonna need some cuttings. For I'm gonna use succulents and geraniums. So we have a few examples of cuttings right here, but then we have have a load of plants in this wagon that we'll be cutting off of and then I also have my other succulents around in the garden that we'll be cutting off of to use our for our gardens. Here is some sedum. This is blue spruce sedum. This is an aeonium kiwi stripe. So you can just cut these stalks off and stick them in the soil and they will root in. That is the same for geranium. So I got two different kinds of geraniums, one with a dark leaf and one with a green leaf. I also have aeonium, I think this is called Jolly Green Giant, two of these. I have some blue chopsticks, chalk sticks. I have some um, ice plant, which is also called Delisperma. Um, which also kind of gives kind of a matted effect. And then, you know, we have just tons of other plants around that we're going to be able to cut off of. So you could also use planted plants like proper perennials and annuals, but they just need a lot of water and care. And uh, if you can avoid that, especially with kids, that's what I'm all about. So, so let's get started. So I started by soaking my moss. Next, get your soil a bit wet so it's easier to kind of mound and control. Next, you can prepare your jute string and sticks for your crosses. You'll need three crosses, one to represent the cross that Jesus died on and two more to represent the robber's crosses who died with him on that day. Any sticks will do. And then I wrap the jute string around until it's quite secure and double knotted on the back. The crosses were a bit fiddly and so perhaps the one item that an adult needs to do for the child. Another top tip is that the smaller the cross is, the easier it will stand up on the back of the tomb because you don't have a lot of soil. You may need to use some rocks around the bottom of the crosses to hold them up. Next, you wanna add a lot of soil to that saucer and over the back of the little pot in order to mound it nicely. Have the child push it down and make a little divot at the front of the tomb in order to make a little path.
The next step is to add the moss on the back of the tomb. So you want to squeeze all the water out and have the child kind of flatten it out on the back of the soil and push as much as they possibly can to kind of adhere it to the soil. Now starts the real creativity. So they can add sand and or rocks to their tombstone. Children just got so creative on where they wanted to put their stones, which stones they wanted to use. It was really fun to watch. And then they get to add their cuttings. Some children loved putting tons of cuttings all over the garden and other children really wanted to keep it sparse. After that, or any time at this point, you can add your crosses. Making a little hole with something, some sort of sharp tool is a good idea in order to keep your cross standing up straight. Now add your tombstone and you are finished. A final quick note, a little addition that the children loved was these wooden peg people that you can order on Amazon or other places online. And we used felt as well as Sharpie markers to make them into an angel, Jesus, and the women who found the empty tomb. So that brings us to the end. Thanks so much for joining me here at Power to the Flower. I post videos every Tuesday, or you can find me on Instagram and Facebook during the week. See you in the next one. Bye.